Today, we are going to look at the interface options for a Sprint Nav system. Let's review the four choices available. For lower accuracy work, it's possible to connect the Sprint Nav and external sensor interfaces to a suitable PC's RS-232 ports or via UDP, so an external interface box isn't essential. Sonodyne's Marine computer uses an 8th generation i7 processor and has 4 RS-232 ports, 2 Ethernet ports and 7 USB ports, which is enough for a typical single vehicle usb aided INS setup. The system can also be supplied with one of two Sonodyne interface units, the Navigation Sensor Hub NSH, and Lodestar Communication Hub LCH both connect to the PC via Ethernet, which means they can be located closer to the aiding sensors or ROV mucks, saving you running cables to different parts of the vessel. The other benefits of using these is that they are fully system tested as part of our software verification procedure, reducing risk once offshore. The NSH is specifically designed for interfacing our time critical navigation systems. It can be configured for different applications and is a variant of what is supplied with a Ranger 2 USB-L. The old Sprint software doesn't recognise the NSH and it should only be used with Fusion 2. On the front of the unit are the status LEDs. These are useful in showing that the channel is active and give an idea of its data rate, which is great during fault finding. On the rear of the NSH, we have 6 RS-232, and two RS-485 ports. Each card slot is numbered and the ports then given a letter. Port A is the upper and B is the lower. If you are connecting to the Sprint Nav with Ethernet and using the NSH, you'll need to supply your own network switch. Or you can connect the Sprint Nav via serial using RS-232 or RS-485. So there are options depending on your application. If you are connecting Sprint Nav via serial, you can connect the NSH directly to the PC and a switch is not required. To connect the NSH, all we need to do is plug in the Ethernet from the Fusion PC or switch. On the PC, start up Fusion 2 and click on the setup cogs. Right click on System and then Add NSH. This will bring up the Create Instrument dialog which should already be set to the default NSH IP address. Click on OK and any problems will raise an alarm now if we add a USB-L input by right clicking on the ROV vehicle in the configuration tree and selecting add instrument then select type USB-L and GGA we can see that we have the NSH ports available in the port drop down. Data should be visible in the comms window if the USB-L is active. So that's now ready to go. The LCH has been supplied with Sprint System since the inception and it has now been integrated into Fusion 2. This makes it a good option if you're planning to compare Sprint software against Fusion 2 before upgrading. The LCH comprises of 8 serial ports which are labelled for their suggested use. These can be configured and changed to RS-485 using the web configurator. There's a 3 port network switch and a 1 PPS conditioner. The 1 PPS is often confused for a 1 PPS source, but it simply shapes a 1 PPS signal from a GNSS to be detected reliably by Sonodyne systems. 1 PPS isn't required for most applications. See our how to videos for PPS setup. To install the LCH, all we need to do is plug it into the Fusion 2 PC. The Sprint Nav can then be connected to the LCH via serial or Ethernet. On the PC, start up Fusion 2 and click on the setup cogs. Right click on System at the top of the configuration tree on the left and then on Add LCH. This will bring up the Create Instrument dialog which should already be set to the default LCH IP address 192.168.179.51. Click on OK, any problems and you will see an alarm pop up after a few seconds. Now if we try and add a USB-L input by right clicking on the ROV vehicle in the configuration tree and selecting add instrument. 
then change the type to USB-L and GGA and we can see we have the LCH ports available in the drop down. If you need to configure the serial board rates or switch between RS-232 and 485 you can click on the icon or type the LCH's IP address 192.168.179.51 into an internet browser. This will open up the configurator, here you can set the port, change the settings and save them. Finally, inputs and outputs can be configured to use third party serial or ethernet converters. Although these are not generally tested with the system in the same way the LCH and NSH are, they are less prone to latency than using a PC COM port and can provide good tracking results. To install these, follow the manufacturer's instructions. It must be capable of a lossless 115200 or higher board rate. Thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please contact the survey support group at support at sonodyne.com. For more detailed information on this or on any of our other Sonodyne products, please check out the training pages on our website. Happy tracking and goodbye!